Hi everyone. Today we're going to discuss another topic regarding the testing of a beam in a heavy structure lab. I believe many of you are curious how do researchers conduct testing in the heavy structure lab. Not many have the experience conducting testing in the heavy structure lab. Also, not all the university have their own heavy structure lab as it is expensive to own one. In today's videos, we're going to discuss about this topic. First is about the purpose and type of the testing. Second is the test setup. And then the testing procedures. And then the result in terms of the loop displacement response. And also monitoring the cracks during the testing. Our focus today, it will be testing of a beam in the heavy structure lab. You know there are other structural elements due to different conditions as well as the nature of the load. The test setup for the other type of structural element may vary significantly. Without further ado, let us get started. First, we talk about the purpose of conducting testing. You know in the research field, there is a lot of innovations and creativity. Researchers are urged to develop new structural elements or use new materials or to propose modifications to the existing technology in order to formulate knowledge, gain better understanding of a structural element as well as the structure. There are many reasons that a testing is conducted. It can be due to the purpose of knowing the behavior, assess the conditions of the structure, determine the load capacity, identify the cause of failure, and so on and so forth. For a typical research, researcher propose a design of a structural element, and often this design has not been tested anywhere due to the novelty nature of the research field and they propose the parameters they would like to study, conduct testing to determine the effects of the parameters, going through systematic analysis, doing some optimizations, modify the design, refine and further refine until a optimized design is acquired. During the process of knowing the behavior and the load capacities, Testing is often required and this kind of testings are normally carried out in the measurable manners, rigorous and with good evidence. The purpose here is to increase the credibility of the respective studies. In general, in the field of civil engineering, particularly related to the structural design Structural elements of structures are being tested. This may include beam, column, slab, foundations, walls, and others. By knowing the behavior and the load capacity, we will know how we can improve the design based on the failure modes and weaknesses observed during the testing so that modifications can be made to enhance the structural performance. Now let us talk about different types of testing. You can do modeling and simulations using softwares, for example, ANSYS, Abacus, LUSAS, and other finite element modeling software. This kind of software can be used to test the specimen virtually. You will need to determine the properties of the materials, model the geometry conditions, determine the boundary conditions, run the simulations in order to predict the response of the structural elements. This kind of testing are virtual in nature and it is very heavily reliant on the values that you key in in terms of the mechanical properties, in terms of the dimensions and geometrical conditions, as well as in terms of the support conditions 
and the interactions between different materials. If you have any part of this not reflecting the actual situations, the simulated result can deviate significantly from the actual situation. This will defeat the purpose of doing simulation using this kind of software, especially when this kind of software cannot properly predict the response of the actual situation. So, in order to properly model and simulate the structural element using software, normally a good number of experimental tests is carried out, and the result as obtained from those experimental results shall be used for the calibrations of the simulated response of this structural element. The researcher will adjust and do some trial and error in order to tune the response of the model result to be as closely resemble the actual situations as possible. In the case that you do not have the experimental result in hand, you can actually use the experimental result given by the previous researcher. The shortcoming it will be, you might not have the full access of all the data and results if you do not know the researcher. But it is still possible for you to calibrate your model result based on the information available. The other type of testing it will be related to the analytical study. This one will be very heavily dependent on the derivations of the equations from the first principles. For a typical undergraduate student, especially for those who are doing the final year project, they find this to be very challenging due to the complexity of the first principles. It requires high levels of thinking orders to be able to synthesize knowledge, identify the relevant first principle, emerge, derive, and come up with a custom-made equations model to predict the response of newly developed structural element. Again, this kind of study it will be virtual at nature, where the predicted result is highly dependent on the assumptions as well as the property of the material use. If the assumptions is inaccurate, the predicted result can also deviate significantly from the actual situations. Now, if the analytical study cannot predict the actual response, this defeats the purpose of conducting the analytical studies. Therefore, the analytical study is normally supported with proper and rigorous verification process. Very often, the verification is done against some experimental result of the actual specimen. Another way to understand the behavior of the material is conducting experiment in the lab. For structural lab, there will be light structure and heavy structure lab. Light structure lab normally test the structural element in the smaller scale using some custom-made apparatus and the emphasis of the studies are mostly on the analysis approaches and probably observe some effects of the changing parameters. As for the heavy structure lab, full-scale or reduced scale sections are produced and tested in the laboratory. This is quite popular in the field of research, as this is the simplest way to acquire the full response of the structure under loads. If you compare to these two methods here, these two methods are testing the specimen virtually. They cannot be standalone. Evidence will be required to prove the accuracy and reliability of the predictions. And normally, it will be on the basis of the experimental tests. In another word, these two testing methods cannot be standalone. 
but the experimental testing can be standalone. If you do the experimental test properly, the result can be quite reliable, as normally you can do it under the control environment with the samples of the manageable size, preferably full scale specimen. But you know that the bigger the size of the specimen, it is difficult to handle and it is also costly. Sometimes researchers reduce the scale to the half or one third of the size to make the testing easier and also to speed up the process of getting the results. Now you will have the testing specimens and you will have to properly design the conditions which is the test setup that can closely simulate the actual situations. Then you conduct testing over the specimen to know the response. Another good thing about testing in the laboratory is that you can actually perform the destructive tests. You know that destructive test is the best testing method for you to acquire the full capacity of the structural element. This kind of testing will eventually destroy the specimen. And you may also observe the damages on the specimen for you to identify the mode of failure as well as the causes of the failure. The disadvantage of having this kind of testing it will be it is quite costly, time consuming and very much dependent on the facility that you have in your heavy structure lab. Another one would be the quality of the workmanship. Under most circumstances, students are the persons preparing the test specimen. The quality of the workmanship may not be on par to the quality of the workmanship of a skilled workers. But if the students can produce the specimen nicely, the result as acquired from this kind of experiment can be quite reliable. Another type of the experiment it would be conducting the testing on site. This kind of testing is actually testing the actual structure on the construction site. Normally this kind of experiment it will be non-destructive in nature as ultimately we will still want to use the structure. Normally we do not like to overstress the structure cause any undesired damage onto the structure which could ultimately affect the structural performance of this kind of structure. Not being able to conduct the destructive test onto this kind of structure, you will never know the actual full capacity of the structure and most often the result will be based on the properties of the materials, any observable damages or cracks noticed from the surface of the structural element and then you gather all these results and make some predictions of the behavior of the structure. This is actually a reverse engineering that you have the structure first. Now you acquire the properties of the materials and then you do some reverse simulations or calculations based on the properties of the materials and then make predictions accordingly. This kind of testing normally happens on all buildings for example, the local council would like to assess the well-being of the structure to decide whether the structure is safe to be used. Then they hire specialists to conduct this kind of study for the sake of public safety. This kind of works are normally referred as the forensic engineering. You see, there are various kinds of testing that can be carried out to understand the behavior of a structural element. Each of them have the advantage and disadvantages. There is no one method is better than the other. It will be very heavily dependent on the resources available and the preference of the researcher. 
every single one of them require high levels of technical skills and specialties. One who is good in doing the experiment may not necessarily be good in doing the modeling using software. Likewise, one who is very good in doing modeling may not necessarily be good in conducting experiment in the lab. As these are all highly specialized techniques that one can use to understand the behavior of the structure. Let's say if you have limited funds and you do not have a heavy structure lab, probably modeling and analytical study it will be your main option. Let's say your university has a heavy structure lab but do not acquire the license of the respective modeling software, probably you will have to go for the experiment. But of course, this is going to consume some money. If you are doing the postgraduate study or final year project, your supervisor normally will have the research grant to fund the experiment in the heavy structure lab. You may seek for the supervisor with relevant research grant in order to finance your research project. 